Okay, this video is dedicated to John Hagelin. And I want him to know, yes, indeed, the universe percolates rubber bands. Not only rubber bands, but strings and holes. Now you can see, I'm going to pull this up where you see, even very tiny little circles that are smaller rubber bands in the background. So many circles. And here's a few, a few more. I have so many pictures I could show you of this because most all of the orbs I take pictures of have these little circles. Now you can look at this one up real close and see in these three how they can interfere. And when they interfere, they make a little pattern there, a little interference pattern. And here's some more. And sometimes they look like this. Now this one, I say, is for string theorist because it looks like a string is going from that hole into that hole. And here's a hole nothing's coming out of. But I get a lot of pictures that look like tubes coming out of holes. Here's another one. Now this is the hydrogen orbitals. I took this picture off of a website and I, th I thought it was interesting because what I look at in the orb looks like these little patterns form that are called hydrogen orbitals. And they just grow into a, a thing that looks kind of like the uh, self-propelling, which I'll show you right here. This is a new analysis shows a way to self-propel subatomic particles. And they show this little design here. I can turn it where you see it now, this way. And you can see it's moving by making this pattern. Now, here's what I get in my orbs. That same kind of movement. And it's like, wow. These people who are studying the smallest things, these quantum physicists, really have a good idea of what is happening in this little tiny, tiny world. Because I think I'm looking into the subatomic microscopic zone of life. That could be argued by some because I'm just using a digital camera and a piece of glass and a, a, an LED light for my light source. Sometimes the sun I use for a light source. And I get such wonderful pictures Pictures of things that I've also seen with the naked eye when I look at light. A lot of what you'll see, I, I can see without the use of a camera. Although the camera can capture some things that I can't see with the naked eye. Also, black holes. Here's a black hole, perfectly round. I used to see one with the naked eye. I saw it for a long time uh, with my left eye when I would look at light and... I kept on looking at that black hole and I saw a little whiteness emerge in the middle. It turned into what looked like uh, the yin yang symbol swirling around, kind of whitish. And then the outside rim of it became colorful and then it just went away. It disappeared. But I did see it with the naked eye and here I see it with the camera. Now this I call the what the Kalibi Yog manifolds might look like. Because I'll show you. This is what I got off of the uh, computer, uh, a website showing that there's a movement of these little things that just do all kinds of little strange movements, real similar to what I get. Now, here's more of the strings. I have many orb pictures with strings like this running through them. It's almost like they were a net. They made made up a net. Weird. Weirdly, because they weren't evenly spaced nets, but, you know, different sizes of, of uh, holes in the net. Here's more of what might be the, that, those manifolds. 
And here's another self-propelling subatomic particle way of moving. And when I look at light, and I, sometimes in the violet part of the light, I will get pixelation. And I, I was watching a video about how the world might be a simulation. And they said one way to know would be to get up real close on anything. And if there was pixelation in it, that meant it was a simulation like a computer would make. So in my violet color, I got a lot of what looks like pixelation. You can see it there. It's mostly little uh, squares, but pixelated for sure. That right there is a orb of light, a photon of light, I think, coming from the light source, all wrinkled up. They often do that. They'll be wrinkled like a little newborn baby and usually teardrop shaped. But one thing I want scientists to know, because I've read a lot of metaphysical books and they talk about the atom. And this one Margaret Storm's book called, uh, can't remember the name of it. She, she says in her book, modern scientists advocate the use of brute force to compel the atoms today, but that lowers the vibrations of the atoms. Since we're all made of atoms and we want to ascend someday, we have to learn that you must respect the little atom. Now, a lot of scientists don't do that. They compel them to do all kinds of things, crashing them together and everything trying to ferret out the secrets of the atom, but the atom is our friend, and we should respect it, and it will tell us things. There's much color and design to be found in the orbs of light that I take pictures of, like this one, for instance, that I thought was real, real pretty. And the colors sometimes shoot up, forming a bridge-like structure on the orb. Now, I received some information. I received it in my Google Drive. It was written into a file that I had called The Power of Love, but I'd never put any content. I was going to, but I lost my encouragement that day, and so I just left the file named, and that's all. So one day I was going to clean up some of those kind of files, and I looked, and there was content in that file called The Power of Love, and it was a message to me. I know that sounds strange, but I don't. I, I can imagine that spirit can write into someone's uh, computer because of the message that came through. Talked about these curved line balls that I, I have began seeing in the orbs, and looking back at the orbs I took years ago, I see they were already showing themselves, but I didn't recognize them then. But anyway, what the person or being that wrote this message to me said was that these curved line balls show a process in which matter is being put together. And see, the curved line balls, after, after they start coming into an orb, and the orb just really shows them up, but I think there's a bigger expanse of them that the orb just shines over part of it, making it show up for me to see and film. And they multiply, they reproduce. And these curved line balls are part of the process. And see here some as well. And they just move from orb to orb and... I've caught them in a lot of different stages. And here's some here. See, they lengthen and they stretch and they mingle with other stuff in the orb. Now, this little character, he often drops down into the orbs or comes in from the side. And I've called him Harry because he's he just keeps showing up. Sometimes when I don't see him and I'm filming and, and I, I just say, Harry, I don't see you. And then a couple of minutes later, like within two minutes, he shows up. There he is again. He has little parts of his cell that don't seem to be connected, but they just hang close to his body. Harry the light creature. Colorful strands of light go through orbs. 
all different colors. This is just a few. This is just one example. I have hundreds, maybe thousands. <laughs> it's raining colors and rings today, I put on this one. And the photons that are like an orb can roll up like a scroll. I always thought this one looked rather like a diploma. Rings that are lumpy and bumpy form in the orbs. And I've got many, many pictures of orbs with bumpy rings in them. There was one day, August the 13th in 2013. On that particular day, the rings started being in the orbs. They started showing up. Even in the, even in the ones that were teardrop shaped that first came out of the light, the rings would be in it already. And uh, I took several pictures that day. And the ring even has a little portion that looks like a, the setting, like a diamond or something in it. Like where it would be, not it doesn't look like a diamond. But these orbs are contortionist. They don't stay round, you know. I got a lot of pictures of them round, but they twist in the middle like this one is doing. The structures inside move around. And look what this one did. Out of the side of it, it just sort of exploded. It's like what's in there is undergoing alterations all the time. There's always movement in these orbs. Light arranges itself in countless patterns, and who is to tell light how to arrange itself? What or who informs light as to how it will behave and in any given moment? Photons move about by reproducing themselves. And I have a lot of pictures of, of it doing this. And this sort of thing where it, 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 it tosses one orb between two orbs. And with my camera moving it this way or that, I can get the little orb to go into one side or into the other side that, or, or stay right in the middle. I've made many videos showing that. And so many colors, so many orbs of light have so much design of color in them. Some days I just go for the color. I just say, I'm going to get all the pictures of the orbs that are the most colorful. And some of them, their beauty is so great that I just, I'm in awe of the colors, just looking at the colors of them. I think it's a very healing thing to do, looking at the colors of these orbs. And see, this shows them as they come forth from the light source, which is over to the right. And um, they just turn into round ones from being uh, a little teardrop shaped. There's another very colorful one. And they do this sort of thing. Another, another very colorful one. And then a few more. One day a bullseye started showing up in the orbs. You see the bullseye kind of peeking behind the color there. And I kept seeing it in all the other orbs I was taking pictures of that day. It's funny about what I can see. I can't always like say, well, I want to get an orb that has a bullseye in it and then just order it up. It just, if that happens to be what's showing that day, I'll get the bullseye. But it doesn't... Uh, it doesn't work by command. I mean, I might want to get it and it accidentally get it, but it's not going to, uh, it's going to do whatever it's going to do. Sometimes the orb is all splattered like colors that are rushing around. It's not in a, in a circle at all. It's not in the uh, orb. It's just all out there like this or like this or like this and very, very fluorescent. And there's another, and another. I got a lot of fluorescent pictures that day. There is no power in the universe other than the energy of thinking mind. Man must think in light. His thinking must be in terms of the electromagnetic periodicities, which measure all motion, for of such is he himself and nothing else. Thinking mind is registered in light, which man calls matter. Nothing is which is not light. And these are words by Walter Russell. 
I read lots of his books on my channel. I read The Divine Iliads 1 and 2, The Secret of Light, A New Concept of the Universe, The Universal One, Atomic Suicide, a lot of his books. So, John, this is something amazing and important, and I think you're the man to tell this to. I have thousands of pictures I would like to share with you because I think that you are one, you are one who thinks outside the box. Have you ever seen light look like lace? Here it is looking like lace. Or twist like this. Or at one end like that. Or like this. Or do something <laughs> Very theatrical looking, you know, a crashing wave and a, an orb that has just become so pl flexible that you can just, it just moves. I've got many pictures of it moving in a real flexible kind of a crawly way. Look at the way this one is moving. You can't see the end of this, but sometimes the end looks like a, the tip of an earthworm. Sometimes light looks like this. Sometimes like this. Sometimes it makes of itself what looks like a tunnel, and you will see many colors and patterns within it. As light travels orb-like, it makes what looks like a tube, often following many colors, often showing many colors within the, the tube. I often get what looks like an eight and so many little circles, and so many colors, and, and colorful bubbles will be on the orb a lot of times, various places in it. Sometimes they'll look like they're belting it, like they were a belt around the orb. Oh, this is a statement by St. Germain. You will come to see that this dear school earth is not such a mess as some would like to think. And I say, like to think. For there is always that force working in some. It is not really them, but a force they have allowed to work through them, as all forces should be seen, that delights in seeing things in the most negative way possible, as they feel it easier to criticize and condemn, rather than take a step into the light and do something constructive and alleviate those conditions. Though they would find it, they could see what their condemnation and criticism does to their own growth, that it is much easier in the long run to be constructive and spend the extra energy than to dawdle by the roadside criticizing others and have to spend a great deal of energy later to get themselves out of the fix into which their opening of themselves to a negative force has placed them. Show you a few more pictures of the orb, and here's some of the colorful bubbles on the side of this orb. And here they are, sort of in the middle of this one. Here's a strange looking one, full of strange colors. And here's some more. Now, I forgot to include the first one that showed this very same scene. But all these little colorful bubble, bubbles were inside of this hole. This like a pocket right here. But then in the second picture I took of the very same spot in the light, all the bubbles fell out of the hole. And this is the one where they fell out. And see, there's some of these little colorful bubbles right here in this one. And the light can weave around and look like it's... Uh, making little crawl spaces or something like that. Something hairy might crawl into. <laughs> the colors can be so beautiful. And sometimes dark light comes from the light source. Like in this case, you see part of this orb is not visible because this dark strand of light coming from the light source has uh, taken over that part of the orb and so it didn't show up. More of the colorful bubbles in this one. 
Very often a dark kind of material will cover the orb partially or even completely. More colorful bubbles and more. I just have so many thousands of pictures of this sort of thing. Light doing such strange things with the uh, rubber bands in concentric circles around circles. And there's some more. Sometimes something strange will be in it that looks like hair. That looks like somebody's dark hair. And see, sometimes when they first come out of the light source and they're teardrop shaped, they also have color in them, even at that point. And there's Harry again. This picture shows some examples. It's like it was made for a textbook, the way the picture turned out because they, this is the different ways they fold, just four of the different ways. They fold so many ways. Now, this came out of a Ken Carey book called The Starseed Transmissions. I love that book. Stardust, frozen starlight. You call it matter. It is an art form from which we have worked for 20 billion years. We're made of stardust. Everything is. These look like these these uh, orbs are all folded up like scrolls, all laid down together. Sometimes they can be rather rather spastic looking too. They don't always go into a perfect little round circle. Sometimes they look like this. I got many pictures of this sort of thing, and look at this one. Looks like an ice cream cone with seeds in it. <laughs> and this one looks like a mushroom, sort of. And see, here's another folded up one that looks unusual. And this one, too. And this one. And this one. And this one even looked like a flower, like somebody had picked a light flower. And see the disturbance going on in this one where these little perturbations are happening. And see, this is how, when it travels like a ribbon, it'll sometimes, you know, just go ahead and make a little round thing. And then go into a series of others that kind of look like bowls, like a series of bowls. And they even do this kind of thing where part of the light will go into another part of the light like the Ouroboros, the snake that eats its own tail. I've seen light do that a lot. That's a very colorful one. So, I wanted to tell you, John, that this communication I received into that file that, is, that was called The Power of Love said that it would give me a report of a sorts to give to those scientists who think that what I look at is only some phenomena of light that's easily explained. But it's not. It's more than that. And they promised to give me a bigger uh, report, but they said they don't know what it is that I want to know. That's where you come in. <laughs> because you probably want to know what light is doing like this. And... Uh, that, that communication, I know it was from an entity that knew me because it said that the light that I'm looking at knows what I want and it will materialize someday in due time. You know, it will materialize that which I have asked for many times. And this is what blew me away. It says that that you ask for that is both silver and gold and fruit. Well, nobody knows this is something I never told anyone, not, not even a family member, that I often mused that if I could create from the thin air and bring something forth from the, the etheric, I would have a big silver platter filled with gold apples made of pure gold. And I wanted 20 of them. And uh, so it sort of promised me that they would help me with my doubting because I do doubt a lot. They said I, I doubt a lot and I don't think 
of myself as being a good person, only maybe just a little bit good, they said. But they said that I was a good person. They wished more people in the world were like me because then we wouldn't have any problems. So that was a big flattering thing, it said. But it said that it that they would help me with my doubt and that, that would manifest for me. And I would have it to use as an example to prove to people that we can create with thought. This is a big deal because we live in a world where people don't have a lot of the necessities they think they need. And they're looking to the governments and they're looking to organizations to help them. And sometimes the agendas of those governments and organizations and corporations are not for the good of the people. And so if people can learn to manifest, they also will be learning to love everyone and seeing everyone as though everyone is God. That is a necessary part of being able to manifest. You have to look at your enemy and see him as God and treat him good and not hate and not doubt and not fear. It's a hard thing to do, they said, that most people can't ignore what seems to be so real. But that's what you have to do. Anyway, I read that entire communication in what I call Manifestation 103. That's one of my videos. If you care, I'll put it in the uh, description bar of this video. I have many, many pictures of these colorful orbs. And I really want to share them with some scientists, some, someone like you, John. Someone that might give it careful consideration. And someone that might want to pose the questions because this communication said, we don't, what's hard for us is that we don't know what you want to know. And so I thought about that. I don't, I don't understand scientifically a good question to ask them about what I want to know about light. But maybe you do because you've studied the ins and outs of this. And so maybe you could give me some suggestion. And when I do receive any information, it's been over two months now and haven't, they haven't given me that report. But they promised in that communication that they would prepare a paper of a sorts for me to give to scientists. And you would be the one I would give it to. Maybe Nassim Harriman too, because I really like his, his whole thinking. So... If you, if you want to uh, comment in the comment section, I would love that. Because I don't think you're a scientist that would dismiss this. And you're the one I want to send the letter to when I get it. I'm on pins and needles and bated breath to get that as well. I'm... I'm as well as to manifest the uh, silver and gold and fruit object. But I don't know the, know the kind of questions to ask, so I'm hoping you will give me a suggestion.